Krishna 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 hey Krishna 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 Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Sarabhyaya Namaha Om Sarabhyaya Namaha Om Sarabhyaya Namaha in our Shastra that uh, <clears throat> of course there are different calendars um, that are followed I don't know the details as such but um, <clears throat> at the beginning of Kartik <clears throat> there is traditionally a festival that is followed very ancient festival in honor of Father Bull. You know about that? Actually, one of our devotees, <clears throat> um, whom some of you know, Kutilya, has been promoting this particular festival. <clears throat> And not simply out of sentiment, actually, but because there are very uh, important reasons why this festival was celebrated and why it should be revived as well. <clears throat> In Sanskrit, Father Bull is known as Vrishabha. I guess it depart depends on which part of the country you're from. It's like if you're from Marissa, you'll say Hare Krishna. <laughs> if you're from some other place, you'll say Hare Krishna. And if you're from Italy, you'll say Hare Krishna. <laughs> uh, different <laughs> countries have their different uh, dialect. So it, this festival is called uh, Brishabhotsavam. And uh, <clears throat> on that day, one is specifically worshipping not only the bulls, because actually the bulls, without bulls you can't have calves. And of course, without cows you can't have bulls also. <laughs> um, so on that day, <clears throat> there's a very nicely arranged procession <clears throat> whereby the bull is decorated very nicely and is dressed, I'm sure, uh, in India. Actually, not only in India, I, I saw recently how in other countries 
on certain days of the year, <clears throat> they also very nicely decorate uh, their uh, animals, their bulls and cows. And on that day also, those who look after the bulls, the cowherds, they're also remembered and honored. Because actually in the Vedic culture, the noblest profession, something unknown in modern day society, but the noblest profession is agriculture and protection of cows. Because they go hand in hand simultaneously. <clears throat> One of the very um, unfortunate developments in modern day society, and of course there are many such unfortunate developments, but one which will be the cause of great suffering for everyone, and it is yet unknown and not understood. And that is indirectly directly, uh, connected with how we are interacting with Drishaba or the bull, <clears throat> specifically in terms of specifically in terms of gave specific instructions in that respect as well. <clears throat> when Srila Prabhupada explained that artificial insemination is artificial. <laughs> it is unnatural. And uh, it actually uh, destroys the progeny. And therefore, we have a, a major serious problem in India and all over the world. Why? Because the bull population, as we know, has been decreasing dramatically over the last decades. So much so that we have seen by visiting various villages during our Dharma Gogram Yatra, how in some villages there's not even one bull left. Cannot see one bull. <clears throat> and there are policies that have been introduced here in India as well, whereby there is planned insemination of cows uh, through artificial means and this is uh, shocking and very unexpected for a country like India which is meant to uphold the principles of dharma and which should show, which should know, which should know much better, you know. <clears throat> That when we when one deviates from the laws of dharma, one should expect severe reactions. So uh, this is part of what we are learning actually through the Bhagavatam. Bhagavatam. The whole purpose of the Bhagavatam is to uh, help us understand these basic the principles of dharma and they <clears throat> they applied directly in terms of how we deal with one another and how we deal especially with um, uh, cows and bulls so <clears throat> I just wanted to share this a little bit because um, it is um, something that um, 
we could say, evades, or, you know, it's not, <clears throat> very few people know about this. Uh, very few, because we are, that's the problem, <laughs> one of the main problems, because we're disconnected with the land and disconnected with the cows, therefore we don't, not even conscious of this. This is the unfortunate situation of Kali Yuga. <clears throat> and <clears throat> through the Bhagavatam and through the uh, Sankirtan movement of Lord Chaitanya, th th these are some practical aspects that we are meant to become aware of. Otherwise, we're just theorists. We're just on the theoretical platform. We're just sentimentalists. <clears throat> not understanding the practical application of the Krishna conscious philosophy. <clears throat> so having said that, we will now read our verse from Bhagavatam. We have started a new chapter. Huh? Can you announce the date so that uh, who are watching on the Facebook page? Can... Uh, it is this... this well, as I mentioned, it depends on different calendars. It's supposed to be the first day of Kartik. This is already gone for us in the calendar we're following. And uh, I think there's, uh, I don't know the name of the calendar, but uh, <clears throat> I believe the date is uh, the middle of this month. Do you know by chance? November 16th. 16, huh? yeah, okay. I wasn't sure if it was 15 or 16. November 16th is uh, <clears throat> is when this uh, particular festival will be followed here in India uh, by uh, <clears throat> those who follow, uh, I'm not sure what the name of that calendar is, but there is information that can be had um, on um, various uh, media, and we have various uh, groups um, and, and uh, that's something actually that uh, IDVM India should be more involved with. I shared this information a few days ago. I think you probably read it. And uh, but the only response we got was from I was happy to read Madhava Prabhu. We immediately responded by acknowledging that yes, uh, bulls are very important, and uh, if we don't properly uh, take that responsibility then uh, uh, we will be in, in, in great danger. We're already in great danger, actually, because of the whole progeny of uh, cows and bulls is in serious danger. <clears throat> and if we're not aware of this, we are in Maya, actually. <clears throat> if we're not aware of so many things, directly connected with dharma, it means that we are suffering from, uh, you know, we're, we're ignorant of very fundamental aspects of dharma, <coughs> and that's most unfortunate. Actually, this is also connected with uh, <clears throat> a campaign <clears throat> this is connected let's see here this is connected with a Hare Krishna <clears throat> a campaign that was started a few years ago by the ministry called Om Sri Sarabhi campaign and uh, we could say that this is another dimension of that campaign uh, to not only bring awareness about the importance of Mother Cal but also bring awareness about the importance of Father Bull as well. <clears throat> so we have um, we have launched, not so long ago, a, um, <clears throat> a channel, a 
channel that anyone can connect with. That channel is on Telegram, and it has the title Om Sri Srivi Campaign. So anyone can actually become connected, become a subscriber, and uh, receive information about uh, this particular <coughs> um, initiative regarding <coughs> regarding Brishava and also regarding uh, Madhya Surabi. So we are now in the very beginning of a new chapter, as we mentioned, which is <clears throat> chapter 20 of the fourth canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam. <clears throat> this uh, 20, 20th chapter is entitled Lord Vishnu's Appearance in the Sacrificial Arena. And uh, <clears throat> we will read text number five. We'll club a few te texts together. We have not read text four, we will read text five. <clears throat> Ataha Kayam Imam Vidvan Avidya Kama Karma Bihi Arabdha Iti Naivasmin Prati Buddho Nusajate Ata Kayam Imam Vidvan Avidya Kama Karma Bihi Arabdha Iti Naivasmin Prati buddho nusajjate Ata kāyam imam vidvān Avidya kāma kārma bihi Arabdha iti naivasmin Prati buddho nusajjate Ata kāyam imam vidvān Avidya kama karma bihi Arabdha iti naivasmin Prati buddho nusajjate Ataha Therefore Kayam Bari Imam This Vidvan, he who has knowledge, avidya, by nations, kama, desires, karma bihi, and by activities, arabdaha, created, iti, thus, na, never, eva, certainly, asmin, to this body, Prati Buddha, one who knows, Anusajjate, becomes addicted. <clears throat> so before reading the translation, we will read the previous text, number four. <clears throat> Purusha yanti twa drisha deva mayaya srama eva param jato dirghaya vridha sevaya. <clears throat> this is Lord Vishnu speaking to Prithu Maharaj. <clears throat> If a personality like you, who are so much advanced because of executing the instructions of the previous acharyas, is carried away by the influence of my material energy, then all your advancement may be considered simply 
a waste of time. <clears throat> There's a short purport. In this verse, the word vridha sevaya is very significant. Vridha means old. Sevaya means by service. Perfect knowledge is acquired from the acharyas or liberated souls. No one can be perfect in knowledge without being trained by the parampara system. Prithu Maharaj was completely trained in that line. Therefore, he did not deserve to be considered an ordinary man. An ordinary man who has only a conception of bodily existence is always bewildered by the modes of material nature. <clears throat> and today's text, the translation, those who are in full knowledge of the bodily conception of life, who know that this body is composed of nations, desires, and activities resulting from illusion, do not become addicted to the body. Kindly repeat after me. Those who are in full knowledge of the bodily conception of life, who know that this body is composed of nations, desires and activities resulting from illusion, do not become addicted to the body, purport. As stated in a previous verse, those with good intellect, suddhiyaha, do not accept themselves to be the body. Being a creation of nations, the body has two types of activities. In the bodily conception, when we think that sense gratification will help us, we are in illusion. Another kind of illusion is to think that one will become happy by trying to satisfy the desires that arise from the illusory body or by attaining elevation to the higher planetary systems or by performing various types of Vedic rituals. This is all illusion. Similarly, material activities performed for political emancipation and social and humanitarian activities performed with an idea that people of the world will be happy are all illusory because the basic principle is the bodily conception, which is illusory. Whatever we desire or perform under the bodily conception is all illusion. In other words, Lord Vishnu informed Prithu Maharaj <laughs> that although the sacrificial performances set an example for ordinary people, there was no need for such sacrificial performances as far as his personal self was concerned, as confirmed in Bhagavad Gita 2.45. Traigunya vishaya veda nistraigunya bhavarjuna nirdvanvo nitya sattva sto niryoga kshema at Bhavan. Translation. The Vedas mainly deal with the subject of the three modes of material nature. Rise above these modes, O Arjuna. Be transcendental to all of them. Be free from all dualities and from all anxieties for gain and safety and be established in the Self. The ritualistic performances recommended in the Vedas mainly depend 
on the three modes of material nature. Consequently, Arjuna was advised to transcend the Vedic activities. The activities Arjuna was advised to perform were the transcendental activities of devotional service. <clears throat> So, very important instruction being given here that although there are various, there are various instructions in the Vedic literatures regarding performance of jagya, performance of sacrifice, <clears throat> uh, there are different uh, levels. Mm. We were touching on this the other day, this karma kanda, jnana kanda, upasana kanda. <clears throat> karma kanda being those activities that are recommended in the shastra but that have some material gain. The idea being that the vast majority of people are <clears throat> very much on the bodily platform. and they need to be induced to engage in at least pious activities. We all know as devotees, as aspiring devotees, as aspiring Vaishnavas, that it is not at all easy to immediately come to the pure platform of devotional service, <clears throat> which is of course, very nicely described, especially in the pages of the Bhagavatam. Ahaitukiya pratihata yayatma suprasidati Performing activities <clears throat> without any material motivation and without any interruption is not so easy. So therefore, in the Shastra, there are different... <clears throat> recommendations that if you perform this then you will get this particular benefit you will go to the heavenly planet or you will get a better birth in your next life uh, like this <clears throat> it is incentive but here as Prabhupada mentions what was Lord Krishna actually instructing Arjuna he was instructing him to rise above those activities and to come to the platform of uh, bhakti, of pure devotional service. <clears throat> so, of course, one may question, well, uh, <clears throat> as described here, Prithu Maharaj is already a very advanced personality. I mean, he's a Shakta Vishavatar, not ordinary person. <clears throat> and for that matter, anyone who actually takes up hmm, this is an important instruction given by our acharyas. Any, anyone who takes up the process of bhakti devotional service is no longer an ordinary person. Ordinary person means somebody who's totally covered and directed. We were reading that a few days ago. Those who have no knowledge about dharma, who have no knowledge about uh, spirituality, who are totally ignorant uh, <clears throat> and on the, on the bodily platform, they are forced to act by the laws of nature. They are, they are bound by the three gunas or modes of material nature and they are forced to act. <clears throat> and that is a very unfortunate um, situation. So therefore, uh, Shastra is there to guide us and to gradually um, bring us to the desired um, <clears throat> level. Uh, just like it is explained how <clears throat> Maya has two potencies. The covering potency, which is that of those who are totally covered by the modes of material nature, totally unaware that they're not the body. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> 
And there's the other potency of maya, which is called the throwing potency, which even though someone may know and may be practicing spiritual life, uh, because maya is so powerful, one may be diverted, uh, <clears throat> especially, of course, in the initial stages of devotional uh, service. <clears throat> so, um, we are therefore being re reminded here of what is actually the essence. Actually, in the Vedic times, um, personalities like Prithu Maharaj would be performing jagyas, these kind of jagyas, um, <clears throat> for the welfare, um, to give an opportunity for people to actually engage in um, <clears throat> in pious activities, with the idea that as one continues to engage in pious activities and gradually he will make advancement, will be become purified, and uh, by some good, good fortune, if he comes in contact with um, <clears throat> Vaishnavas, those who are uh, knowing about the process of uh, bhakti, <clears throat> which is the only process, as we hear, <clears throat> especially from the, from the Bhagavad Gita, the only process that actually can put an end to all karmic reaction. And it is only when we come to that point of uh, no longer generating karma. The, the, the more, as long as we continue to generate karmic reaction, either good karma or bad karma, Prabhupada would say, this so-called good karma is actually also bad karma. <laughs> um, any uh, <clears throat> positive or negative reaction to activities um, when they are performed on the bodily platform, material platform, is uh, undesirable because it is binding us or keeping us here in the material world. And that is why this knowledge of bhakti or devotional service is described by Lord Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita as being very, very confidential. Uh, it is very rare for people actually to come, uh, first, uh, first of all, very rare to even come in contact with this knowledge. And even after coming in contact with this knowledge, it is even um, uh, also very rare to actually apply that knowledge and come and, and, and to come to that perfectional uh, stage. Um, <clears throat> so therefore, um, <clears throat> here, um, uh, in other words, Prithu Maharaj is being instructed that although you're performing this yajna um, <clears throat> and you were trying to uh, perform your 100th yajna uh, because there are personalities who are disturbed by that, in particular Indra, because he had performed 100 such yajnas and he was attached to, you know, uh, <clears throat> to the results he was attached to having, um, <clears throat> um, we could say, the. Um, he was attached to being recognized as, oh, I have done this, you know, if somebody does more, then uh, I will be reduced. This is bodily uh, platform. And of course, Indra, because he's not a pure devotee, he is um, making such kind of mistakes uh, at different times. Like he did, of course, uh, Govardhan Puja is 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 um, also, in, you know, in connection with Lord Indra, um, <clears throat> who was very disturbed because uh, the jagyas had been uh, stopped uh, due to Krishna uh, convincing Nanda Maharaj that we should worship Govardhan instead of Indra. Rains will come anyways. <clears throat> um, so um, 
these are important uh, reminders um, uh, for us to know <clears throat> what is actually the essence of what is presented here. Mm. I'll just read the text again here. If a personality like you, mm, like you, means Prithimaras, who are so much advanced because of executing the instructions of the previous Acharyas, is carried away by the influence of material, of my material energy, then all your advancement may be considered simply a waste of time. Those who are in full knowledge of the bodily conception of life, who know that this body is composed of nations, desires and activities resulting from illusion, do not become addicted to the body. Any comment on this?